Good evening and welcome to Riverwood. Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. Uh, kung nanonood po kayo sa inyong mga tahanan, kung nasa biyahe po kayo o kaya nasa trabaho, thank you for tuning in with us to listen to the Word of God. So ito pong Riverwood talaga is an avenue for us to to listen to the Word of God, to really know the Word of God. And we encourage you din po to tag your friends, tag your family members, mga kakilala po natin, so that they can also hear God's Word. So tonight, I'm excited to share with you the Word of God. And our topic is about faith and believing in God's promises by faith. So our text for today is in Romans 4, 20-21. Basahin ko po from NLT. It says, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Ang ganda po ng uh, account of Abraham's faith dito po sa Romans 4, kung paano po ni-record, kung paano po uh, sinabi yung tungkol sa faith ni Abraham. What are the qualities of his faith? Yan po ang titignan natin tonight. Ngayon po yung panahon na, uh, panahon ng pandemic, panahon ng uncertainty. Madami pong nagbago na sa mundo. At kumusta po ang ating faith? Kumusta po ang quality na ating faith? Kumusta po ang status ng ating faith? Tignan po natin from Abraham what we can learn about the faith that he had and the way that he obtained the promise of God by faith. So, just to give you a uh, Konting background lang po tungkol sa Romans 4. So, this chapter is all about Abraham's faith. At ang umpisa nga po nitong chapter na to, humanly speaking, si Abraham ang founder ng nation of Israel. Yan po ay dahil sa ang pangako ng Panginoon sa kanya is that from one man, he will make a great nation. Na ito pong bansang Israel na nakikita natin ngayon, it just came from one man from one God who promised him that he will make him a great nation. Grabe po no, yung testimony ng Israel and uh, how it was founded from one man, from Abraham, from God's promise, nagsimula po sa pangako ng Panginoon at ngayon isang nasyon na siya na nakikita natin. And until now, it stands today. This nation, Israel, stands firm today. Amen. And so, Ano po ba yung story? Paano niya nakuha yung inheritance na yun? Although si Abraham hindi niya talaga nakita yung nation of Israel, but he believed by faith. Kaya nga po na-commend ang faith niya dito sa Romans 4. In Genesis 12, God uh, told him to leave his country and go to a land that he will show him. And dun po pumasok yung promise niya sa verse 2 that I will make you a great nation, I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. This is such a great promise. Si Abraham walked without uh, knowing where he would go. At ang pangako po sa kanya ni Lord is that you will be a great nation. Pero may problema po siya. Wala po silang anak. Abraham and Sarah does not have a child and they are old. So aside from wala silang anak, how can they have descendants? They are also old or advanced in age. They are around, si Abraham po was around 75 and si Sarah senior citizen na din. Meron din nga pong verse sa Hebrews na, Although their body was good as dead, they believed what God has promised. So talagang yung katawan daw nila as good as dead, talagang hindi na po posible biologically or naturally to conceive. Good as dead. Diba? To conceive or to uh, bear fruit. But we do not live in the natural. We live in the supernatural. Our God is a supernatural God. And so he made it possible for Abraham and Sarah to have a child. At yan po si Isaac. And from Isaac, nagkaroon po ng descendants. And now it is the nation Israel. And hindi po madali yung proseso. I should shortcut ko na lang po yung story. Uh, I'd like you to read it on um, Genesis 12 and then going to 17 hanggang sa ipanganak po si Isaac. That um, hindi po madali yung paghihintay nila. They waited for 25 years for the promise. Gano'ng katagal na po ba tayo naghihintay sa mga pangako ni Lord sa buhay natin? Meron po ba tayong mga pangako ni Lord na hinihintay ilang taon na? 10 years? 5 years? 1 day? 1 month? 
gaano katagal na po tayo naghihintay. O baka naman po, hindi na tayo naghihintay dahil nakalimutan na natin o dahil nawala na tayo ng pag-asa. Ngayon po, uh, before I continue to share the Word of God with you today, um, bago po natin himayin yung verse, gusto ko po na alalahanin nyo ano yung mga pangako ng Panginoon sa inyo na hindi pa natutupad. Ano pa yung mga pangako ni Lord sa iyo na inaabangan mo? Alalahanin po natin ngayon. O kaya baka nakalimutan na po natin. Pero ang Diyos hindi po nakakalimot sa pangako niya. Tayo po pwedeng makalimot. Pero si Lord hindi siya nakakalimot. Kaya balikan po natin yung mga pangako ni Lord. Yung mga promises niya. At pag-aralan po natin, how can we have this kind of faith? Yung quality of faith ni Abraham. So let's look at the verse Romans 4.20 Sabi po dito, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger and this gave glory to God. Tingnan po muna natin yung salita na never waved. Ayan. Yung to wave means to sway, maging indecisive, to sway between choices. Yan po yung mga ibig sabihin niyan. To become uneasy, to become undecisive. So parang nagsisway ka Ganun. Today, naniniwala ka sa pangako ng Panginoon. Bukas, hindi na. Kung ngayon naniniwala ka, agagaling ako, Lord. Makakatayo ako ulit. Makakalakad ako ulit. Tapos, nakaramdam ka na hindi maganda. Kinabukasan, nag-sway ang faith mo. Parang hindi na yata mangyayari. O kaya, something na hinihintay mo sa Panginoon na pinangako ni Lord for many years. I don't know kung ano po yung mga pinangako sa inyo ng Panginoon. Pero I'd like you to Uh, remember it, ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of those promises na baka nakalimutan niyo na po sa tagal niyo nung hinihintay. Pero si Abraham, kahit 25 years siya naghintay, his faith never wavered. His faith never wavered. Hindi po natinag yan sa Tagalog, hindi natinag. Kung baga na natiling matatag. A picture comes to mind po kapag yung salitang hindi na tinag. Kasi po medyo madami pong bagyo sa Pilipinas, lalo na nung mga nakaraan. Uh, for example po, yung isang bahay, ano, dumaan na ang Undoy, dumaan na ang Yolanda, at kung ano-anong mga bagyo. Pero nakatayo pa din. Hindi na siya, hindi na tinag. Yan po, yan po ang ibig sabihin ng never waver. Hindi na tinag. Kung babasahin po natin yung Genesis, um, Genesis 12, 15, 17, yung mga dialogue po doon si Abraham and si Lord, up to the point na tinanong ni Abraham si Lord na, paano mangyayari yun na magkakaroon ako ng nation, ng descendants, e wala akong anak, Lord. You see, Abraham's faith was not perfect. Pero in account siya ni Lord sa New Testament, yung pagkatingin ni Lord sa puso niya, naniwala siya. Hindi man perfect yung talagang 100%, pero yung account ng Bible sa kanya, tinignan siya ni Lord na hindi siya natinag. Nakatingin si Lord sa heart mo, hindi ka ba matitinag? Sa paniniwala sa mga pangako niya. Pwede pong hindi tayo perfect yung uh, faith natin. Ano? Wala naman po siguro talagang tao na makaka-achieve ng ganong perfect faith. Even our faith, it comes from God. It's really by God's grace who gives us faith. And we have faith by hearing and hearing the word of God. Galing pa rin po kay Lord yun. And so, ito pong mga bagay na to. He never wavered. That's the quality of his faith. And instead of wavering, instead of manghina, ano pong nangyari sa faith niya? It became stronger. It became stronger. It grew stronger. And his faith gave glory to God. Grabe po you know, yung, yung phrase na yun na instead of wavering, instead of manghina yung faith niya, ito po challenge po sa atin to ngayong pandemic now that we're, um, everything is almost online and um, we're minimizing yung paglabas natin because of the pandemic. Ano? So instead of manghina po tayo, ang, ang encouragement po ngayon is maging mas malakas yung faith natin. Amen? Mas maging mas matatag yung pananampalataya natin sa Panginoon. And that stronger faith, as we grow in our faith, it gives glory to our God. It gives glory to our God. Thank you, Lord. And so, ano ba yung mga pangako ng Panginoon sa inyo o sa atin 
na tinatayuan natin, minsan po ba nag-waver na yung faith natin? Balik lang po tayo. Kung minsan po nagsisway yung faith natin, napupunta sa kabilang side, napupunta sa unbelief, bumalik lang po tayo at maniwala at magtiwala sa Panginoon. Yan naman po ang kagandahan talaga sa Lord. Always go back to His promise and do not give up. Instead, be stronger in your faith. Amen. Encouragement din po yan sa akin. I will also say that to myself. Panghawakan natin ang mga pangako ng Panginoon. Never waver. Amen. And the second part po, tingnan naman natin sa verse 21, yung um, characteristic ng faith niya dito. It says here, He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever He promises. Kaya pala, kaya pala hindi siya natinag. Kaya pala nag-grow yung faith niya. It's because he was fully convinced. Nakakita na po ba kayo ng tao na fully convinced? Yung talagang hindi mo mababago yung isip. Kahit anong sabihin mo, hindi magbabago yung isip niya. Kahit anong persuasion mo, hindi nagbabago yung isip ng tao na yun. Desidido siya. Sure siya. Certain siya. Ganun po si Abraham. And by faith and by God's grace, I pray makuha din po natin to na, Lord, maging fully convinced ako. If I will be fully convinced of something in this world, I will be fully convinced that my God is good, that my God is able. Si Abraham fully convinced siya of what? He's fully convinced that God is able to do what He had promised. Fully convinced siya na kaya ni Lord kung ano yung pinangako niya. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Meron bang mahirap sa Panginoon? But He created the heavens and the earth. He created us. Grabe po amazing the way that He created us. He holds our lives together. Diba? He knows the numbers of our hair. Lahat po, alam ni Lord. Lahat po, kaya ni Lord. But are we fully convinced? Yan po ang tanong. Are you fully convinced that God is able to do it? Or kapag may dumating po na pagsubok o kaya po challenge, nag-waver po tayo. Nawawala po yung belief natin. Nawawala po yung faith natin. So Abraham was fully convinced that God is able to do what he had promised. He put his faith not on the promise, but on the promise giver. Uulitin ko po yun. Abraham put his faith not on the promise, but on the promise giver. Alam niyo po, it's one thing to believe in the promise, to anchor yourself, yung talagang itayo mo yung sarili mo, iasa mo lahat nung sa pangako na yun o sa bagay na yun. Pero iba po yung ang pinagtitiwalaan mo, yung ina-anchor mo yung sarili mo kay Lord, dun sa nagbigay ng promise. Because the, the one who gave the promise is greater than the promise. Nakuha niyo po yun. Mas higit si Lord. Ano po ba yung inaantay natin na pangako? Ano po ba yung mga uh, pangako ni Lord na inaantay natin? Alam niyo po, mas higit ang Panginoon. The promise giver is always greater than the gift or the, the promise that we're waiting for. So ang habulin po natin yung nagbigay ng promise. Dahil tapat siya. He's a promise-keeping God. That's who our God is. You know why Abraham was fully convinced that God is able to do what he had promised? Alam niyo po kung bakit? Dahil kilala niya si Lord. Kilala niya yung character ni Lord na si Lord tapat. Pag nangako siya, walang salita sa bibig ni Lord na lumabas. That will return to him empty or void. Yan po yung sabi sa word ni Lord sa Isaiah. That no no word that came out of his mouth, that comes out of the word of the mouth of the Lord will return to him empty or void. Everything that He says will come to fruition. Lahat po ng sinabi ng Panginoon mag- magaganap. But it's up to us to believe, to partner with God. Are you convinced? Or hindi ka masyadong convinced? Is your faith wavering or unwavering? Is your faith weakening? Or is your faith being strengthened? Yan po yung mga tanong na uh, 
bulay-bulayin po natin, pag-isipan po natin ngayon, and really ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, what are the promises in my life that I stopped declaring? You know, in this pandemic po, talaga, the Lord reminded me of the promises that He gave me like years and years back. And in my mind, parang may checklist ako of, of the promises of God and the things that I'm waiting on Him. But you know what? The Lord just reminded me one day because I'm too focused on the pandemic. I'm too focused on um, kumbaga, coping and surviving and really like adjusting to, to the pandemic. And the Lord reminded me, you know, my promises, hindi nagbago. Balikan mo. Balikan mo pa rin yung mga pinangako ko sa'yo. Alam niyo po si Lord, hindi siya limitado ng pandemic. Hindi siya limitado ng lockdown. Higit siya sa anumang bagay dito sa mundo. Kayang-kaya niyang gawin ang lahat ng bagay. Kaya huwag po natin ikahon ng Panginoon. Huwag po natin ikahon na uh, at this time po na of hardship, of difficulty. Actually, ngayon po, kaya pa rin i-fulfill ni Lord yung promises niya. You can still have that breakthrough. You can still have that that thing that you're waiting for na galing kay Lord. If it's His timing and if it's His will. So what is our response? I believe it is to live by faith and not by sight. Not to be moved by our present circumstances, but to live by faith. At tingnan po natin yung faith natin and how we can strengthen our faith. Bantayan po natin yung, yung faith natin. Is it still there? Is it still standing? Andyan pa po ba? Is it wavering? Is it unwavering? Is it getting stronger instead of getting weaker? Maging mag, mapagbantay po tayo. At tignan po natin, saan po ba natin nilalagay yung pananampalataya natin? Doon po ba sa mismong promise? Or doon sa promise giver? Let us put our faith, our whole belief or hold faith in God that He can do what He can promise that He can do what He has promised because that is who He is because that is who our God is He keeps His word He keeps His promises and whether makita po natin yung fulfillment nung pinangako ng Panginoon in our lifetime or maybe not alam niyo po ito si Abraham he saw, he saw some of the promises fulfilled, like yung son niya, na si Isaac, pero hindi niya nakita yung fulfillment talaga, yung nation of Israel, and that he became a father of many nations. Hindi niya po nakita yung full na fulfillment. But he believed, and he lived by faith. So whether makita mo po natin yung resulta ng paniniwala natin, yung pagtitiwala natin sa Panginoon, or hindi sa sarili nating lifetime, what matters is that we put our faith in God. That we put our trust in Him. Because He who promised is faithful. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us, Lord, to strengthen our faith. And na, Lord, hindi manghina yung faith namin, but to be stronger, Lord God. And to be fully convinced, Lord, na kaya mong gawin kung ano man yung mga pinangako mo sa amin. Lord, we remember every promise that you made, that you told us, Lord God. Every promise, Lord, that na received namin sa salita mo, Panginoon. And we continue to believe, Lord God, even though we see the opposite. Lord, naniniwala kami na kaya mong gawin, na kaya mong tuparin yun, Panginoon. Maraming salamat po, Lord God, dahil ikaw ang Diyos na tapat sa pangako niya. Salamat, Lord. At ngayon pa lang, Lord, nire-receive na namin kung ano yung pinagpipray namin kung ano po Panginoon yung inaantay namin Lord God you are able, you are more than able Lord to do exceedingly abundantly more than what we ask for or think thank you Lord God for your goodness in our lives bless everyone Lord who is listening today Lord God may we continue to put our faith in you Lord God Strength, help us strengthen our faith Lord God give us grace for every day Lord and itong, itong buhay namin Panginoon maging pleasing sa iyo Lord God May it be a sweet aroma to you, Lord. Maraming salamat po, Lord God. And for those people, I pray for those people who haven't known the Lord yet, I pray that you will know the Lord and really trust in Him, to put your trust in Him. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Lord, this will be a starting point na makilala ka nila, Panginoon. Salamat, Lord God. Tapat kang Diyos sa lahat ng panahon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
for listening and thank you for joining us tonight here at River Word. And it's a continuous weekly broadcast po. So we encourage everyone to continue to join us. We have it every Monday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 p.m. Live po yan dito sa Facebook and YouTube channel of River of God Galleria. Thank you and God bless you.